a few miles from Wilmington, Delaware, near Kennett Square, Pennsylvania, is one of the world's great horticultural showplaces, Longwood Gardens. This great display garden has been called an American Pleasure Garden. Originally developed under the personal direction of the late Pierre Samuel DuPont, Longwood ranks with the famous Kew and Hempstead Gardens in London, those of the Villa d'Esti at Tivoli, and the Borghese in Rome. Through Mr. DuPont's generosity, the gardens are operated all year round by the Longwood Foundation, a non-profit organization for the edification and enjoyment of the public without charge. Every year, about a half million persons from all over the world visit Longwood. More than 12,000 visitors have toured the gardens on a single day in spring or early fall. Longwood has some of the largest private greenhouses in the world, a vast indoor conservatory with a system of auxiliary growing greenhouses. More than three acres of gardens are under glass. Beneath this glass canopy, special climatic conditions are created to grow hundreds of varieties of ornamental plants despite summer heat or winter cold. Not even the heaviest snow or the most frigid outside temperatures can destroy the delicate beauty of the growing flowers inside the main conservatory, which may show a garden in the full blush of spring. Conservatory displays vary constantly throughout the year. During the Easter season, for example, many beautiful flowers are artfully arranged in all their fragrant beauty. Other displays include Australian acacias. One of these is the scurfy acacia, whose scented foliage is trained to form feathery arches over one of the main paths. These bright yellow flowers are among the garden's more unusual treasures. In other parts of the conservatory, the Easter display features colorful clusters of tulips and fascinating schizanthus, or butterfly flowers. They form a mass of brilliant reds, yellows, and purples framed against a green background of shrubbery and lawn. Longwood also has a notable camellia collection of more than 150 varieties, the largest indoor collection in the country of these small evergreen trees. In February and March, all the camellias are in full bloom, single, semi-double, and double varieties. These are part of a large indoor collection of azaleas, many of which are familiar to household gardeners everywhere. Azalea colors range the spectrum of the rainbow. No horticultural display would be complete without orchids. Longwood's collection is one of the finest in America. Cymbidiums are among the longest lasting of these exotic flowers. As orchids bloom, they are placed in special display cases and changed frequently. Visitors learn that many an orchid is fragrant as well as beautiful. Among the more unusual types is the flamboyant butterfly orchid and a bizarre species with fluttering petals. Visitors to the main conservatory also enjoy the fine specimens of Australian tree ferns with their delicate green arching fronds. Several greenhouses are required to show the tropical collection. Included is the radiant Ixora, the exotic Mexican chalice vine, a pitcher plant from Malaya, the hibiscus, and this lovely example of a South African bird of paradise flower. In the desert house, soil and climatic conditions similar to the world's arid regions have been carefully reproduced. Here is a display of strange forms such as the climbing orchid cactus, the heart of fire, a kind of bromeliad, and the creeping devil finger cactus. There are many others. In November, the conservatory features hundreds of chrysanthemums of all types trained in a variety of ways. 
Other displays during the year include superbly grown specimens of Gloxinia. Primrose. Ranunculus. and climbing Gloriosa lilies. Separate greenhouses are devoted to growing various types of fruits, including espaliered peaches, apricots, and nectarines. This gardener is training nectarine branches into a fan shape, or espalier, as it is called in French. Necessary cross-pollination is difficult because of the absence of bees and other insects indoors. Spraying the blossoms with a fine water mist solves this problem. Nectarines, treehouse ripened, are sweet and juicy. Ah yes, we aren't the only ones who have noticed this. Longwood Gardens is the scene of almost constant building and improvement. These new pools for the water lily collection form a mosaic-like pattern. The giant tropical Victoria water lilies look like small green rats, and not even a butterfly can resist the temptation of this proud beauty. The flower of this gorgeous Amazonian lily resembles a tiny pink-frosted iceberg it opens only at night. To keep Longwood's floral glory continually at its peak requires a large staff trained in many specialties. For this reason, a workforce of nearly 200 persons, many of whom live on the grounds, is needed. The staff includes gardeners and botanists, tree men, tractor operators, and maintenance men. Longwood is a small but self-contained community with its own volunteer fire department. The greenhouses alone use enough oil annually to heat an average home for 175 years. Longwood Gardens also is becoming an important center for horticultural education. Longwood cooperates with the United States Department of Agriculture in the introduction of new or little-known ornamental plants into this country. The educational program also includes an annual winter series of horticultural lectures, guided tours on a prearranged basis, and various short courses on common horticultural practices for the gardening public. An important unit in this program is the reception center, where information about the gardens or its plants may be obtained. Other, more social activities, such as benefit fashion shows, also take place in the conservatory. Longwood's outdoor gardens, a gentle blend of art and nature, are a fitting complement to the year-round displays in the conservatory. They include this charming informal garden which takes advantage of the natural terrain. In contrast to this informality, the formal fountain gardens have the disciplined grandeur of Versailles. The main electric fountains are among Longwood's best known attractions. An elaborate system of pumps endlessly circulates water from a reservoir system which holds more than 650,000 gallons. Approximately 18,000 gallons of water a minute are required to supply all the main fountains at the same time. At night, changing colored lights play upon the shooting plumes of water, rising in streams or spreading into misty, fan-shaped sprays, creating a world of fantastic colored designs. Close by the main fountain garden is an unusual anilematic sundial, patterned after one in a churchyard near Bourg, France. Longwood's giant sundial gives the exact time. The shadow cast by the center staff tells the hours and minutes. The outdoor gardens also provide a beautiful setting for an open-air theater, a mecca for summer visitors. Seating more than 2,000 persons, the theater is a permanent monument to Mr. DuPont's lifelong love of the arts. 
This amphitheater is made available to local nonprofit organizations for the staging of benefit performances. Near the open air theater is one of several rose gardens. Here may be seen more than 200 varieties of one of the world's oldest and best loved cultivated flowers. The variety, Mrs. Pierres Dupont, was named after the wife of Longwood's founder. A terrace garden also features a fine selection of roses, as well as, in season, a brilliant collection of tulips. And, in the fall, chrysanthemums, which match the beauty of this lovely visitor. In the summer, the attractive square garden with its single graceful fountain is surrounded with a mass of multicolored periwinkle. An exceptionally lovely part of the outdoor gardens is a small lake, beautifully situated against a background of fine trees, a sloping wooded hillside and wide sweeping lawns. In the full glory of spring, the lake is boarded with a carpet of golden daffodils. And here is the same scene, the bright yellow of the daffodils gone, everything mantled in winter's white cloak. Below the lake, visitors see the Renaissance elegance of an Italian water garden, patterned after a famous villa garden near Florence. The four blue tile pools are bordered in ivy, neatly trimmed so that the garden is all green and gray, except for the shimmering blue of the pools and the flashing jets of the fountains in the sunlight. Longwood's Arboretum is still a building, but it contains a collection of specimen trees and shrubs, including Japanese cherry trees, oaks, and flowering crabapple trees. While viewing the outdoor gardens, visitors hear the electronic chimes marking the passing hours of the day from this 60-foot stone tower. Near the chimes tower is a graceful waterfall. Tumbling from a rocky ledge, the falling water is not only a thing of beauty, it also serves a practical purpose. It is part of the water supply which continuously feeds the main fountain system. At night, the artificial cascade is brilliantly illuminated amid this sylvan setting. These are only a few of the scenes at Longwood Gardens which has become one of America's outstanding horticultural show places. The Great Conservatory, with its many acres under glass, the outdoor gardens and open air theater, all help make these gardens a cultural center where the arts of landscape architecture, horticulture, music, and drama are harmoniously combined for the enjoyment of all.